down there's just a corn snake <laughs> oh yeah fantastic well i've smelled snake twice so far a really distinctive smell in both cases and one of them i found found a little corn snake similar to the other one i found just a tiny little thing so i guess that was what was giving off the smell but maybe not maybe a python had been there and had had a tussle had killed something When I was a kid, I used to come out here. I mean, there was corn snakes all over the place. You see how it is now? There, no, you don't see. There's nothing. I mean, you got. We haven't seen any kind of mammals. No rats. No raccoons. No possums. We haven't seen anything. So you think the pythons are now moving out into suburbia more and into the agricultural lands more because that's where the food is. Yeah, left. they've got agriculture. They got that's where the rats go to eat. We take a last look around for pythons at the end of the levee. This stretch of water is known to have alligators in it. We watch our step. When I was a schoolboy in Australia, one of my brother's classmates got grabbed on the side of her head by a carpet python which had lent off the garage. So pythons definitely do see people as viable food. Then Reuben spots something. I got something crawling on my head. It's a praying mantis. Excellent. You see? Yeah, look at that. <laughs> there is life here, after all. Who said the Everglades were empty of wildlife? Look at this. <laughs> Fantastic. I love mantises, they're really cool. Where are you? Where are you? There you are. Come on. Come on. Fantastic, look at that. So one of the most interesting things about mantises is they if you go back through the fossil record, they evolved flight, they lost it, they evolved really? it again. It's really, really crazy. I love how they bob. The only other thing that does that really frequently is like a, an eagle, the way eagles do that. Yeah. Right, and they check stuff out, the mantis is doing the same. That's amazing. There you go, little guy. It's surprising to find such little life in these rich wetlands. Unbelievably, Studies by the state confirm the pythons have reduced some small mammal populations by 99% in southern Florida. On our way back, an unexpected stop. Our airboat smashes into solid ground, launching us into a canal. some muscle to get it off the bank. We're clear. Back on dry land, the python hunt continues. When Reuben gets an unexpected call. I think I got something for you. I got a little snake for you here, man. What, what was the coloration of it? I think it's a, uh, it's a python. All right, we're on our way. Now? Yeah, yeah we're on our way right now. I love the fact that the guys are on a speed dial to go and respond to any snake emergencies in the area. It's great that people are doing that as opposed to just killing anything they see there. Calling up the experts and asking the experts to deal with it. It's a good step in the right direction. So you've got the snake in a bucket? Yeah, I saw the snake under the uh, golf cart and she moved over and coiled up and I put a bucket on top of it. And that's when I caught you guys. My son is uh, anxious, uh, awaiting. Uh, have you seen the snake yet? No, he hasn't. You seen haven't it seen yet. it. You no, looking no, forward no, to no. seeing it? Yeah. I've got a snake hook on me if we need it. Okay. Yeah, I got a hook. Just, just in case. There's a python. You yeah. never know what you're going to get on one of these calls. It's good to be prepared for any size reptile. Yeah, watch out with that one. Man. Yeah. So it's probably about five or six feet long, actually. It's a perfect example. We've got a snake coming into a farm area because you've got a lot of frogs, you were saying. Yep. Presumably a lot of rodents may be attracted to this area too. It's not in great shape. It's, it's okay, but it's not, it's, not, it's not full. And I think that's been a bit of a trend of the ones that, that we've been seeing. They haven't been really, really well fed. There's probably so many snakes out there that they're starting to eat themselves out of the natural habitat. Yeah, and exactly. they're now being forced onto people's territory to find find food. We're not seeing many mammals, are we? We're not seeing, no, no. not seeing many rats or mice or the types of things that 
used to be really abundant here, seem to be declining. Do you want to come and touch it? Do you want to touch it? Yeah, you should. You sure? Because I've, I've got the head, so it's totally safe. And then really, really nice and smooth. Right? Okay. Really soft. Okay, son. I'll just touch the, he touch the head, just, just by my thumb. There we go. Look at that. Oh, you saw the tongue come on. So it uses that to taste and then figure out where its food is and what's around. They, they taste the air. I want people to know these pythons are not evil, but are adapting as best they can to the new environment they've been thrown into. The work Ruben and his team are doing is vital, not just removing a threat, but also improving the reptile's image. See that? <laughs> How does that feel? You guys have got all the information you need. Yeah. So 